What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, I've got about $2,500 in books to unbox. Two of them are Silver Age Amazing Spider-Man keys. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to evaluate 10 of the big Silver Age Spider-Man keys and identify which ones look like they are good to pick up right now. Stay tuned. All right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So I've got these two packages here. Uh, this one I had already taken out of the, uh, the envelope because the postal worker like chucked it onto my porch, I saw it, and uh, I was a little worried about, uh, it was inside of another box and that other box was damaged and I was a little worried. But the interior, uh, Gemini Mailer looked fine, so I'm hoping that everything in there is okay. Uh, but I'm gonna start with this one. And this actually has one of the, or should have, one of the Amazing Spider-Man keys in it that I'm going to talk about. Uh, and because we've got that Amazing Spider-Man movie coming up, there's lots of speculation that they're, they're basically building the Sinister Six. I thought this would be just a good opportunity to go over those characters that could potentially be on that team. Now, a few months ago, I talked about some of those in a, a heritage sale, and but with this one, I'm gonna focus on the Silver Age keys, uh, so the big Silver Age keys for, uh, for Amazing Spider-Man. And this is one of them. Let's see here. All right, so if you watched one of my prior unboxing videos, uh, I actually picked up a copy of this from Superworld, but this is a, a raw book. And this one should be a little bit nicer than the one from Superworld. I will probably get this one graded, we'll see. Uh, but this is Amazing Spider-Man number six. And so it's the first appearance of the lizard. Uh, I've mentioned this a number of times before that this was a book I'd always wanted to get. As a kid, I wanted that first appearance because I had his second appearance in Amazing Spider-Man 44, um, but I could never afford the first appearance when I was a little kid. Now this one, it's kind of, I think it's a fun story with it. You see there's some highlighter that's on here and here. Now this wouldn't be qualified as color touch because it's not trying to improve the appearance. It would basically be identified as a stain. Um, now one thing I did ask when I bought it was if any of that highlighter was up in the yellow, because if it was, then that's something that could potentially be qualified as color touch and would be a problem. But, but no, and I thought the, the interesting thing was that the seller told me was that uh, the person he bought it from, he put this highlighter on his books to differentiate them from his brothers because his brothers would, would take his books. And so I thought that's kind of like a fun little story that goes with it. But uh, let's take a look real quick at the interior. You know, and remember, always always take the, the tape off so you don't accidentally put a tape pull on this book. Um, so you can tell it hasn't been pressed yet, so it does have a what looks to be like a subscription crease, you know, in the middle. Um, but it has a lot of like, kind of like dimpling on the cover, so that could at least improve the appearance of the book. And, you know, back looks generally fine as well. A little chip out of the bottom there, but looks like a nice copy. And so it's Silver Age book, should have 36 total pages. Um, I always, you know, like to check the interior cover first to see if anything jumps out that seems like, you know, color touch or something like that, but nothing does. And see the, the opening splash page is pretty cool. I've never had a raw copy of this one. So I always like those, those big opening splash pages is when it's like one big piece of art but let's see. All right, so there's eight pages to the center fold. Uh, at the center fold, the bottom staple is attached. The top staple is not. The top staple is punched through, um, but I don't think that should be a problem at, at this grid. And then there's eight more pages, back cover. So everything looks, you know, looks fine with it. Uh, I, I felt like it was a, a really, you know, 
reasonable price for this book. So even if there's a little more damage, you know, like I, I, I don't believe I knew about the centerfold being detached to the top staple, but not a big deal to me just because at this grade, I don't really see that as an issue. And uh, I, I don't think it's gonna really, you know, take the grade down anymore for, uh, for this book. But so this first one, this is definitely one that I, I will be talking about uh, later on in the video. Now, the second one here, there are four books that are in here. And, you know, packaged real well. It has, you know, the little pull tabs. And I'm not gonna go through all of, you know, I'm not gonna do the page count of all of these because I've got a lot of books that I wanna talk about uh, for the Spider-Man villains. And so I will count the pages later. Uh, but the first book here, I've shown this maybe one other time in a different unboxing, and I, I sold that copy and had a chance to pick up another one. I just, I love this cover. I've talked about this cover, I think, in one of my top 10 videos because it had a really high sale. And this is Showcase number 79. And this is the first appearance of Dolphin, who there's the possibility that you could see this character pop up with... Uh, with Aquaman or something like that, but it's it's really more just of a, a cover buy for this book because You know, it's kind of like a good girl art type cover from the the Silver Age But it's this awesome green kind of like faded background where you've got this transition in color You know the light green to the dark green from the top to the bottom just a really really cool cover I've, I've always really liked this book and so happy to pick that one up then the next one here is a big book to pick up because of the Green Lantern Corps show that's supposed to be coming out. And this is Green Lantern number nine. And so this is the second appearance of Sinestro. His first appearance is in Green Lantern number seven, but this is his first cover appearance. And it's also, it's got, it's got a cool cover. You know, like this one has got this solid green. This one has this largely solid orange. And I just, I like, I like those types of covers. I just think they look real sharp. And, you know, a nice looking copy. Again, I'll do the, the page count and, and flip through after I'm, I'm done with this video. Then the next book here, now this was basically a, a pretty well-timed <laughs> well purchase um, because this is a book that has now gotten really hot again. It had gotten hot earlier this year, then it cooled off a lot. And now because of the, uh, because of Marvel, they've confirmed that there's gonna be a show for this character. And this is Fantastic Four, number 94, which is the first appearance of Agatha Harkness. And there's gonna be a show based on that character now. And so this is, should be a, a pretty nice copy. I think it was estimated at an 8.5. I'll take a look at it. But generally a, a pretty nice copy of this book. And this is also, I believe, the first time that Franklin Richards is actually named, actually named Franklin. And so I'll, I'll do a little flip through of the book when I have a chance and, and I'm, I'm almost certain I've, I've heard that. And so I'll, I'll confirm it because I've never had, I never actually owned a copy of this book. I have owned a copy of this one. I have owned a couple copies of Showcase 79. And now uh, this is the first time I've owned this. Now the last book in this box, I'm actually not going to be talking about this Spider-Man villain as part of the video. Uh, just I didn't consider him big enough uh, to, to include in it, but still a very desirable book from the Silver Age. And this is Amazing Spider-Man number 46. And so this is the first appearance of the Shocker. He was actually in the first new Spider-Man movie, uh, the... Homecoming, Spider-Man Homecoming. He was one of the characters in that movie. Um, but, you know, just a Silver Age, first appearance, uh, never bad books to own, uh, you know, with, with Spider-Man. So I was I was happy to pick this one up. So I feel like, you know, some, some pretty cool books in, in that one. You know, Amazing Spider-Man 46, Fantastic Four 94, Green Lantern 9, and Showcase 79. But now the, I think the, the fun thing to talk about for this video, and that's gonna be the Spider-Man villains, the Silver Age Spider-Man villains, and which ones really look undervalued right now, which ones are good options to pick up. So I looked at 10 different villains, as well as I, I looked at Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number One, 
and I looked at their prices a year ago, the prices that they peaked at, and what their current price is. So we can do a comparison between all of them and get a good idea which ones right now might be undervalued so that they're good options to pick up and which ones are actually much more expensive right now, maybe the books to steer clear of. I'm gonna start at the earliest Spider-Man villain and move up from there. So the first one is Amazing Spider-Man number two, 1963. This is the first appearance of the Vulture. And this is a character that we are almost guaranteed that we're gonna continue to see. They keep showing him in trailers. He's in the, uh, the Morbius trailer. We know that he was talking to the character that ends up being the Scorpion. So there is just tons of potential for that character. Now, the book that I looked at, what I did for this video, is I was trying to find the sales that happened most recently. A lot of times what I'll do is the most common book, but with how prices have been jumping around so much, I decided to go with ones that had the most recent sales. And in this case, it was a CGC 2.5. Now, a year ago, 2.5 was selling for about $1,500. The record price was on September 19th and it was 2622 Now the current price is actually $1,950. It's come down. There was a $1,800 sale on October 7th and a $2,050 sale on November 10th. And I've actually talked about this book before in one of my market videos, or I think it was a top 10 video where there was a copy that went really cheap and I wish I would have bid on it. So I've estimated the current price at $1,950 and that is only up 30% from its price a year ago and down 25% from its high. So that's one that, that I think looks pretty appealing right now considering the price moves that we've seen in a lot of other books across just comics in general. All right, now number two, is Amazing Spider-Man number three, also 1963. This is the first appearance of Doc Ock, one of the most popular in-demand Spider-Man books that there is. I mean, you basically would go Amazing Fantasy 15, Amazing Spider-Man 1, and then probably Amazing Spider-Man 3. I think it would be above uh, any of the other Spider-Man villains. Now, the grade I looked at was a CGC 2.0, the price a year ago was $1,500. The record, September 6th, was $2,500. That was probably right around when that trailer came out where we saw that Doc Ock was going to be in the next Spider-Man movie. Current price is about $2,375. There was a sale of $2,376 on October 3rd. So it's up about 58% from its price a year ago, but it's only down around 5% from its high. So it's not up all that much but it isn't down all that much either all right now number three is amazing spider-man number four we're still in 1963 for this book this is the first appearance of the sandman one of the worst <laughs> villains or worst spider-man movies i think he the villain was played okay but the the movie itself uh, was was not great but there is a lot of speculation that we will be seeing this character in the next Spider-Man movie as part of potentially some Sinister Six team up. The grade that I looked at was a CGC 4.5, where the price a year ago was about $1,200. The record was $2,600 from June 2nd, which is actually my sale. That was the book that I sold. The current price is $2,150. And so there was a sale of 2160 on October 19th, estimating around 2150 So it's up 79% from this time last year, and it's down 17% from its all-time high. And so when I'm talking about how much books are down, how much they've been up, a lot of books that I, I watch just in general have been up over 100%. So when I see books that are up less than 100%, it at least catches my attention a little bit. Now, in general, I have been looking for books that are down a little bit more, down around 30% or so, but given that this book is only up 79%, that still does catch my attention as a book to be on the lookout for. All right, now number four, this is Amazing Spider-Man number six, still in 1963. This is the first appearance of the lizard. That's, you know, this book right here. And the book that I looked at was a CGC 3.5. And there is a scene in the first trailer that has a character that people think might be the lizard. It's also a character that was in Andrew Garfield's version of Spider-Man. And so since it seems like they're pulling in villains from those other versions, we already know we're going to have Electro, that I think it's very reasonable to think that the lizard is a character that will show up as well. 
So the one that I looked at was a CGC 3.5. Price a year ago was $750. The record on May 26th was $1,550. Its current price is around $1,200. There was a $1,135 sale on October 20th and a $1,480 sale on September 19th. So it's been trending down a little bit. It's up 60% from this time last year, and it's down about 23% from its high. So again, a book that has moved less than 100%, definitely one that I'm interested in, and that is why I have picked up two copies of that book. Okay, so now number five, this is Amazing Spider-Man number nine, jumping up to 1964 now. This is the first appearance of Electro. I just talked about that character. He is a character that we know Jamie Foxx is coming back to play, at least in some capacity. It was confirmed quite a while ago that he's in this movie. So that is definitely a character that should be of interest. So the book that I looked at was CGC 4.5. Price a year ago was $900. The record was 2,040 on July 19th. And the current price is 1,650. So it's up about 83% from this time last year, and it's down 19%. So again, another book that is up less than 100% and down around that 20% mark. So something that's maybe worth keeping an eye on, especially since we know that character is going to be showing up. Okay, so now number six, this is Amazing Spider-Man 13, still in 1964. This is the first appearance of Mysterio and Honestly, this is a book that I've been surprised that we've seen the moves that we've seen in this book. I don't know if somebody knows something that they know that in some way this character is coming back or they're gonna be using this character, but this is one that I wouldn't have really thought would be a option for someone to come back. Yeah, he's one of the original Sinister Six, um, but since he was killed off, I know the multiverse can potentially bring anybody back, so you never really know. Uh, this was one that I was, less confident that we would end up seeing in the movie. But the grade I looked at was a CGC 3.5. A year ago, that was going for $700. The record was 1,500 on October 30th, and so the price that I have it at right now is 1,500. It's at that high. It's up 114%, still at its high. It's, it's basically peaked right now. And so that is not a book <laughs> that I would be looking to buy right now. That is definitely one that I would be a little more wary of up over 100% from a year ago, and a character that we don't really know if is uh, if that character's coming yet, and it's still at its high. So definitely one that I would steer clear of right now. All right, now number seven, this is the book that has just been the hottest out there, it seems, for the most part. And this is Amazing Spider-Man number 14. This is the first appearance of Green Goblin, and ever since people saw that pumpkin bomb, uh, in the first trailer. It really got people hyped on this book. It started to spike. And in the poster that they released, you've actually finally got him in the background of that poster. And so that puts to rest a lot of the speculation about it being Hobgoblin. Doesn't mean that you won't have that character potentially show up, but at least now we know that Green Goblin is definitely in it. No real news on if Hobgoblin is or not. But the grade that I looked at was a CGC 2.5. The price a year ago was $950. The record was $2,500. That was on November 8th, and that tied its prior high on May 16th. So that's a book that, that hit that spike earlier this year, and it's back up at those prices. So I've got the current price at $2,500. It is up 163% from last year, and it is at its high again. This is a book I would be very wary of. The only reason you might still want to kind of like get into that book is that we know that character is actually in the movie now. It, that has been confirmed. And so you have a little more positive news, something that you can really work with on that. But still, this one is up a lot, up 163% and at its high. So be a little ca uh, cautious with it, um, but one that at least you know there's some future with that character. All right, so number eight, this is Amazing Spider-Man number 15. This is the first appearance of Kraven the Hunter. Now, I don't think anybody really expects that character to be in this movie, but it doesn't mean that there won't be potentially some type of Sinister Six property in the future that they would incorporate him in, uh, because he's already been, uh, it's been announced that there's going to be a standalone movie with that character, similar to what they're doing with Morbius. And so 
it does seem like Morbius is eventually a character that will likely be part of that group, uh, given the trailer where they show him talking with, uh, with the Vulture. And so with this, I could see this as something very similar where they will eventually bring him in as some part of, lar of like a larger group. But the grade I looked at was a CGC 4.5. The price a year ago was $800. The record was $2,500 on May 26th. That book really spiked earlier this year. It's come down. The current price is about $1,650 with a $1,700 sale on November 8th and a $1,625 sale on October 16th. So it's up 106% from this time last year, but it's down 34% from its high. So that's something that's interesting to me, uh, something to look out for because yes, it's up over 100%, but it's now down from that high over the 30% mark, which is something that I've really been looking at for a lot of books to trigger when I start to buy into them again. So definitely something to consider, especially since we know that we have that character coming in a future property. However, it is up over 100%, so that's something to be a little wary of, but we do know that character is eventually coming. All right, so number nine, this is Amazing Spider-Man, number 20. This is the first book that jumps into 1965 that, that's on this list. This is the first appearance of the Scorpion, and I think there is a, a decent chance that we're going to see this character in the movie because he is one of the characters that did talk with the Vulture. So either we'll see him in this movie or potentially some future property that's focused on the Sinister Six. Now, the grade that I looked at was a 4.5. The price a year ago was $540. The record on October 22nd was $1,075. So I've got that as its current price. I've got the current price at $1,075. This one is up 99%, just about at that 100% mark, and it's at its high. So one that I think has potential in the future, but it is at that peak right now. So I'd be a little cautious about picking it up right now. Maybe a wait and see. If that character doesn't show up in this next Spider-Man movie, I could easily see the prices drop. And that would be a good time to get it because I do think we will see this character in the future at some point. All right, now number 10, this is the last individual villain book I'm going to talk about. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 41. This is in 1966. This is the first appearance of the Rhino, and there's been some speculation that this is a character that could reappear. He was in the Andrew Garfield movie with, uh, with Electro. I have mentioned this before, I did not like that depiction of the Rhino. Um, I, hopefully, if they end up bringing that character back, they do it in a different way. But it is a very popular character, a very popular book. Uh, you know, he's right on the cover, it's a great cover. Uh, the grade I looked at was a CGC 4.0. Price a year ago for a 4.0 was $250, very affordable book. The record on August 15th was $610. The current price is about $475. So it's up 90% from where it was last year, down 22% from its peak. It's a book to consider. It's one that you could potentially consider going after, but I'm not so sure if it's a character they're definitely going to use or, or really considering using right now. It seems like there are a lot of other characters that have had priority. Characters that seem to play a little better in the prior movies are the ones that they're trying to bring back. Now the last book I'm going to talk about, and then I'm going to uh, kind of put them all together next to each other so we can do a comparison and see which ones really look like they're the best options, the undervalued options to go after right now. And that is Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number 1. Now, this is the first appearance of the Sinister Six. So this is a play on uh, the fact that it really seems like they're trying to put that team together. And that original group was made up of the Vulture, Doc Ock, Sandman, Electro, Mysterio, and Craven. And I think they're going a different route. They're going to use a different group, but I think there'll be some overlap there. Now, this book has gotten very expensive. Uh, I looked at a CGC 4.0. Price a year ago was $925. The record on May 21st of this year was $3,000. It had gone up over 200%. Now the current price is about $2,400, so it is still a very expensive book. It's up 160% from this time last year and down 20% from its peak. I think it's a good book to own. I mean, owning an, a number one is always a good positive. Uh, owning a book that has gotten more and more popular is a good positive, but it is up a lot, up 160%. 
And it's one of those things where if they end up doing the Sinister Six in a movie and then they're done with them, it will likely come back down. But I still think, what I think they're planning on is I think they're planning on building that team and doing a movie around them later. So I think the Sinister Six could definitely have uh, kind of like some legs to it, something where it lasts longer than just this Spider-Man movie. Uh, we'll definitely see if that's how it turns out. Um, but if you can find this book at a maybe at a discount, find it at a good price compared to current current fair market value, maybe it's worthwhile picking up then. But it is up a lot, up I think only second compared to any other book that I looked at here. All right, so now I'm going to put the table up of all 11 of these books next to each other, so you can see a, a direct comparison. And you can see I've identified the ones that I think are the most undervalued right now. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't buy any of the other books. Uh, if you find books at a, a good price or whatever, it's always worthwhile to pick them up. I mean, that's that's really what I do. I'm always looking for those discounts to fair market value. That's what I like to buy. And so it's not necessarily the most undervalued book that I'm always going after, but if I have the opportunity to pick up one of those books also at a discount, it's especially good. And so you can see that's why I've, I've liked picking up this book, why I bought two copies of, of this book recently. But the, the three that I think are the most undervalued, and I think it's, it's kind of crazy because they are big keys. I mean, arguably the biggest keys of the villains, and that's Amazing Spider-Man 2, Amazing Spider-Man 3, and Amazing Spider-Man 6. Now, with 2, I think that is probably the best book, the best buy right now. It is up only 30% from a year ago, down 25%, so almost at that 30% threshold that I look for, and barely up from where it was a year ago, and a character that it seems like they are essentially making him the person who's almost gonna be the leader of this team that they're putting together. And so if you can find that book at around fair market value or under, definitely, I think a great book to pick up. Now the next one is Amazing Spider-Man number three. Now this one hasn't had that drop off in price. You know, like, like I said, it's only down 5%. But still, it's up only 58%. So it's up the, the second least of any of the books I looked at. And being probably the third most in-demand Spider-Man book out there, I think that is kind of crazy that it is only up that much compared to what some of these other books have done. And so, yeah, it's not at a discount really to recent highs, but it seems like it is a pretty good value compared to other villain books. So. Amazing Spider-Man number three, I think, is also a great book to be looking for right now. Uh, now, then I've got Amazing Spider-Man number six, First Appearance of the Lizard. And again, this is one that I put on here because it's only up 60% and it's down 23%. So it's down over 20%. It's hardly up at all compared to some of these other books. I mean, you've got a couple of these that are up over 150%. This is only up 60%, major Spider-Man villain, early Spider-Man villain. And so I think that is another one that's a great option to buy. Now, I did mention issues four and nine as well earlier. I think those ones both being under 100% are definitely worth keeping an eye out for and considering. But the top three that I've got on here are issues two, three, and six. Now, the last one that I have highlighted is issue 15. Now, that's the first appearance of Craven, And the reason I have it kind of in that orange is that it's up over 100%. It is up quite a bit but it is the only book on here that was down more than 30%. That 30% threshold that I've been really looking for uh, for a lot of these keys to have dropped before I was buying them again. And so that's one that I just wanted to make a note of because we know we, we, know we have that character coming. That's a definite that that character has been cast. We know that they're planning on one solo movie and it sounded like multiple potential solo movies with that character. So that is one that I think has a lot of potential long term for it and being down as much as it is from that high, definitely a book that is worthwhile to keep your eyes open for. And you can also see the books that I probably wouldn't really be picking up right now. We've got a few books that are up 100% or more, some right around that 100% mark. So those are the ones that I'd be really wary of. They're, they're, they're at their peak right now. And with how we've been seeing prices retreat for a lot of other books, buying a book at its peak value right now is uh, would make me nervous. So 
use that information however you will, uh, but that's, that's how I'm looking at these books right now. All right, so I hope you found this video useful. Uh, maybe help you pick out some books that you might want to look for, add to your collection. Uh, if you did, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I've got more videos over here if you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.